everyone. Welcome to Things We Said Today, a Beatles podcast video cast about the Beatles. Anything and everything having to do with the Beatles, both together and apart. My name is Darren DeVivo, one of the three hosts of Things We Said Today from WFUV Radio. That's where I come from. Um, and I'm joined by my dear friends and co-hosts, Ken Michaels. Ken's been doing Beatles programming on the radio for decades. Today, these days, he's hosting Every Little Thing, the syndicated uh, Beatles program. Uh, and also he has his own YouTube channel, Ken Michaels Radio. Uh, that's his website, KenMichaelsRadio.com, where you can find out everything that he's up to. And Ken also co-hosts another podcast slash video cast, Talk More Talk, which concentrates on just the solo years. And Ken, how are you? Welcome to uh, another show. Thanks, Darren. Great to be back with you and Alan and welcoming our special guest back to the show. Absolutely, yep. I want to let everyone know before you continue, I've been having some problems with my camera here. So in case I cut out, I'll be back before you know. Okay, sounds good. So if you see Ken's name, zap across the screen. Hmm. Um, He's still there. All right. Uh, Great to see you again, Ken. And Alan Cozen's here with us as well, of course. Alan's been writing about music for, I guess, longer than we've been talking about it and playing it on the radio. Alan, uh, you've read his work in the New York Times through the years. Um, the Wall Street Journal comes to mind immediately. A number of books, both on the Beatles and classical music. And, of course, the McCartney Legacy. Volume 1 is out. Volume 2 is being written as we speak. In fact, there is Volume 1 right behind Alan of the McCartney Legacy. Alan Cozen working with uh, uh, Adrian Sinclair on that book. And, of course, Alan takes a little time out every other week to uh, be with us here on Things We Said Today. How are you, Alan? Great, Darren. Looking forward to talking to Mark Rivera again. And Absolutely. Hello, Ken. Hey, Alan. Well, I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> now, before we go to Mark for part two of our Ringo birthday salute, Ken's got the news, and there is a pretty hot item on the top of the news this week. Well, thank you, Darren. And I should point out that since we just did a show, part one with Mark Rivera just a few days ago, there hasn't been that much news uh, since that time. But we do have a couple of news items, the first of which you probably have heard about. And that's that Penn Gillette just said on his podcast show that he visited Abbey Road Studios and met Giles Martin and Penn got to hear the new recording, the new Beatles recording of Now and Then. The original recording... Penn said, had John's voice, piano, and the television on loud. They took out the television, which I guess means that that loud hum that we've heard for quite some time when we heard the demo was actually from the television. Uh, from the Beatles session, they had some of George's guitar playing when they worked on it after working on Fears of Bird and Real Love. Uh, Paul wanted to sing along to John's voice, but they made it a younger voice, which I know a lot of people have been either critical of or raving about with all these AI recordings that have surfaced. You can make Paul sound younger. Maybe they're trying to make it sound like this is what Paul would have sounded like when John recorded the song. I don't know. But um, this is according to what Penn Jillette said. And they used an outtake from Because with John, Paul, and George harmonizing on one chord and they took that chord and changed the key, which they used for their backing vocals. Uh, Paul added his bass. And uh, with Giles Martin, they put on an orchestra. They added an orchestra and horns for the song. Giles contacted Ringo and asked him to add his drums. Originally, Ringo didn't want to do it. But Giles said to him, look, you're the drummer for the Beatles. This is the last Beatles song. So he agreed to do it. And he mailed the tapes, Jal mailed the tapes to Ringo, and Ringo recorded his drums at his home and mailed it back to Giles. They're saying the new Beatles single will be out in about a month or in September. So Gillette got to hear the new Beatles song and actually in the very studio that it was mixed in. And Gillette also had some other news that they are remixing the Red and Blue Collections. 
he said with the new mix, and I guess there was a specific song he listened to, you can hear John and Paul's vocals uh, as though they're a foot apart with more separation there. All right. So news right there coming from Penn Gillette, who got to hear now and then. Also released on June the 2nd is a digital album only, as far as I know, called Play McCartney. This is by Malik Rashan. That's R-A-S-H-A-U-N. And Max Camo, C-O-M-E-A-U. Malik plays the piano and Max does the lead vocals. It's made up of 11 solo McCartney songs, all performed with a jazzy twist. And there are covers of very deep McCartney tracks, including the song we were singing, Single Pigeon, Jenny Wren, Women and Wives, Calico Skies, If I Take You Home Tonight. How cool is that? Oh. The song that uh, Paul gave to Diana Krall to record. And When the Wind is Blowing. All right. You can get this on Max Camo's uh, website at Max Camo, that's C-O-M-E-A-U dot Bandcamp dot com. I've heard some of it. It's pretty cool. Just a piano and a voice doing all these solo McCartney songs. And like I said, going pretty deep there. When the wind is blowing. <laughs> and if I take you home tonight, really nice to hear that someone recognized the, those songs and are covering them and the other ones I mentioned. But that's all the news I have this time out. Hey, all right. Thank you, Ken. It has been, I don't think this has ever happened before where we've had a guest say, hey, can I come back next week? You know, I've got more to say, but we're so fortunate that Mark Rivera, sax player from Billy Joel's band, you know, of course, you know him from the All-Star Band, still affiliated with the All-Star Band, uh, even though he's not actually physically on the road with them in this year or in recent tours. And we were having a good time talking about Ringo uh, for Ringo's birthday that, uh, hey, we decided to add on and have a second part. So. Uh, just a guy who knows a lot of stuff about a lot of stuff. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So yeah. I couldn't fit him into one show. And to tell you the truth, probably can't fit him into two shows either. But uh, we're going to give it back. a try now. going to give it a try. His book is out. It's called Sideman in Pursuit of the Next Gig uh, with Ringo writing the forward. The book was published earlier this year. And it gives uh, me and Ken and Alan great pleasure to welcome him back. Here he is, Mark Rivera. We're back, and he's back. Hey, everyone. Mark Rivera back with us uh, for a second show in a row. And, Mark, uh, uh, you know, I'm speaking for Ken and Alan when I say thank you so much for making yourself available again to talk more Ringo, All-Star Band, Billy Joel, Mark Rivera, etc. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for having me, first of all. And it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Uh, our last uh, soiree uh, it was so much fun, and I, I'd hope that I didn't talk too much to get. Uh, I, I want to leave you guys some space to ask some questions, but thank you, thank you for the opportunity, all three of you. No, no such thing as talking too much, yeah. unless it's one of us. But not okay, <laughs> and I see you've come, and that happens. <laughs> no, and I see you're prepared with your Ringo shirt. Oh, this is my favorite Ringo shirt of all. In fact, this one—it's it, almost impossible to find this one, and it's just a great shirt. And one of the first time, one of the first times I wore it while we were together, yeah. I, I happened to like that shirt. I said, "Yeah, I know." So with the sunglasses, it's a cool one, I must say. Huh. Since we got to see your decor last time, I thought I'd wear one that would match your. Uh, oh, your, 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 oh <laughs> Jimmy Hendrix! <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. All right, and so. Ken, of course. So while we're while we're looking at our, each other's wardrobe, oh, and they're very nice. <laughs> and, and today I have nothing. <laughs> uh, shirt, though, I mean. That's for the White Album. Uh, but anyway. That's the White Album. Well played. <laughs> the things we say today oh, yeah, fashion show. White Album. <laughs> uh, great to have you back again, Mark. And we left off talking about the All-Star Band. And mm -hmm. uh, I guess picking up uh, with now this part two of our Ringo birthday show, um, I did think to myself, since you are still the music director, but you're not touring with the band, mm -hmm. once you leave them, say even this year or recent tours, you leave them to go back to what you need to do. 
is there ever an instance where Ringo or anyone in the tour associated with the tour will get in touch with you for some reason? Has there ever sure. been a on during the tour issue that you need to be reached out to? I'll I'll hear from either not Ringo directly because what like like I think the last thing that we said was uh, how do you um avoid certain confrontation or certain things getting to Ringo you mm -hmm. don't allow it to get to that point and if anything's happened in the past you know if somebody's uh not pulling their weight which is usually I could say 99% of the time is never the case because people want to be in this band but in the in the once in a thousand time someone is having trouble or a backing vocal or whatever the case may be, I'll get a call. I'm close with the, um, with our sound man, Brian Bavivo. And uh, he, uh, he's, he'll say, by the way, little, you know, we need a, uh, we need a little tweak. And then I'll just make a phone call and remind people that it's not their show. And uh, again, it gets down to that, that simple, the simple communication skill that I think I've been pretty lucky to, to, uh, to sport. So mm -hmm. yeah, once in a while things, you know, um, it's, it's also, you, you're talking about this, this is usually a short period of time, maybe four to six weeks is a whole tour and they're flying around and, you know, they're in a, a private jet. It's a wonderful, it's a very, what is it, again, a, 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 a an embarrassment of riches. Oh, I got to leave this city to go to the next city because we're in the private jet and we'll have sushi tonight or Indian food or whatever the case may be. But sometimes you just need to re be reminded it's a it's a band and hey, I'll do the Bill Belichick, do your job. Yeah. And it's usually heard. It, it I don't think it's ever fallen on deaf ears, except for one time where we've been through that already. So. <laughs> It's funny because it sounds like, you know, amongst the members of the band, if something is beginning to go off kilter, it'd be like, shh, you don't want them to call Mark. It'd be well, like, yeah. they're <laughs> going to call up, da dad's going to get the phone call. And oh, well, yeah, well, the principal, you don't want to be up to the principal's up. I think the main thing is the absolute respect we have for, most importantly, our respect for Ringo and the respect we have for each other and self because mm -hmm. you want to do a good job. You just want to do a good job and you're respectful of the band members because they're great guys, they're great musicians. And it, nobody wants to be that weak link in a chain. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've been very fortunate. The guys, this band in particular, has been together a long time. Uh, I mean, from the time that I was I was un, unable to make the last tour uh, and Greg, uh, Greg Raleigh was still in the band. And then he moved on and uh edgar is now in the band and but this this kind of core between um luke and and um why well, luke colin of course um greg Dizanet, who is the glue hmm. uh and um hamish hamish has been in the band quite a while now yeah if you think about it i mean last time the last time i was in the band richard page was still in the band Mm. And I think for a while after I left, Richard might have done one more tour because of one with Richard and Todd when Todd was still. I mean, there's so just think about the names I'm throwing out yeah. here. Mm. You know, you yeah. know, Richard Page and Todd. And, you know, it's it's um, it's look, I'll say it again and again. It's an honor to be associated with these guys, let alone to actually be considered their director. Right. You know, um, one more question from me and then we'll go to Ken and Alan. Um, Warren Ham is the guy who yes uh, is now uh, been yes. playing is the sax mm -hmm. man and some keyboard multi instrumental. He's a fantastic multi instrumentalist, amazing harp player. He's one of those guys that has been around a long time. That Absolutely. a lot of people might not know who he is. I remember the first tour. I went looking around and I'm like, holy smoke! He was a member of this the band Blood Rock back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, tell he, me a little bit about how you, were you responsible for getting Warren Hammond to fill your shoes? That was that was Steve Lukather because Luke had already used him uh, with Toto, and he knew he knew Warren from decades ago, probably. But uh, they they were buds, uh, and he was just a perfect fit. He's very talented, great singer. He was um, I don't know if you know this, or you probably saw it with Olivia Newton John. He was a John Travolta when they did all those Grease hits. Really? He's oh. yeah. He he's that good. <laughs> I hate him. 
No, he's, he's, <laughs> he's no, he's that good. He comes, he's a great, wonderful keyboard player. A brilliant. He's a like I said, his harmonica playing is off the chain, absolutely off the chain. So, and he's a great guy. I really, I really love him. I, you know, it's funny because you, you speak about people again re- replacing or the guy replaced me. Or so we just are blessed to to have the opportunity to take a gig. And you never take a gig away from anyone because I believe the gig gods is enough work for everyone. And, you know, you just don't, you don't need to do that. Right. So, I've gotten calls sometimes to do a gig and I'll say, well, you don't have anybody. Well, so-and-so is playing sax, but we thought we'd use, I said, wait a second. Is he available? And if they say yes, then I'll say, well, listen, I, I really don't want to take anybody's work. If they're not available, believe me, I, I'd love to do the gig. Hmm. But, um, yeah, but back to Warren, great guy, great guy, and 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 Luke, Luke is a re- is responsible for that, and it was seamless. He came in, he and I spoke, uh, showed him some bits where I, you know, vocal parts, and even to this day, at the last rehearsal, we were flipping Colin and Warren's vocal parts because they're usually the higher the higher uh, uh, harmony, hmm. and sometimes as you hear it back, you know, you know, let's have Warren sing the. The, the second part and have uh, have Colin sing the full voice of Colin's got a tremendous voice sure. yeah. and he goes straight up and he's got one of those voices that just goes straight up like there's never a point where it gets thinned out like mine does but he's a great singer and it's just a matter of like well this harmony this blend is better and mm-hmm. uh, it's just a blast I mean think about it it's like, like a, it's a science it's like an experiment oh let's try this a little of this a little like making mm-hmm. a, a nice making a, preparing a delicious sauce if you would <laughs> um well this uh, between the three of us is kind of like a delicious sauce oh, yes. i've been blessed to get to work with these guys and alan uh gonna throw it over to you to fire away at some at mark rivera okay um i'll start with um something that's um pretty random which is um have you heard now and then yet has ringo played you that the track no no i have not uh, heard that yet uh, is that the one? Is that with? Uh, um, uh, did he co-write that with Jennifer Warren? Is it? No, that was. Um, no, it was the. It was the uh, John Lennon demo that they. Oh no, I have of... not heard that. No, 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 I have not heard that. Thought so perhaps you? if you were no, if you, uh, I've heard the demo, but not what they did with it, uh, and uh, thought perhaps if you had been been out there to rehearse them for this tour, he might have had it. Ready. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll know. I'll hear it in September, but I, I think by then it'll be out. I hope. Yeah. So you know the crazy thing with AI, it's such a, 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 it's the tool, is it's such a double-edged sword. Mm. I mean, the reason I think I mentioned before about my my audio book, the reason Ringo wouldn't just sign the the uh, the the worldwide or three hundred and sixty deal is right. because. Once they could do whatever they want, they could do whatever the hell they want, and that's you want to you want to retain some of that, sure. especially when you think of some of the, some of the stuff that you're hearing nowadays. Like, you know, people be turning over in their graves if they hear some of the stuff. But right. I believe that they're taking, I mean, painstakingly uh, going through this and making it. They would not release anything that wasn't great. They never did, and I don't think they ever will. Right. Uh, no, just because there was a, a podcast came out this weekend of Penn Jillette and um, he heard it. So I thought you must have heard it because you work. With no, well, well, there are no, they're, they're out. They're out there. I mean, Luke's probably heard it because he's always having dinner with, with Richie. So mm. Mm. No, I, I'm, I'm, I'm the East coast guy. So I don't get to, I don't get out there. We'll get to speak to him. And I know there's no way he's going to send me a, a copy or he might say, Hey, listen to this and put it on the stereo, but that'll be, that'll be the next thing. Okay. And whenever I speak to him, it's usually like, "Hey, how are you? How's the family?" Uh, you know, I try. I try not to. We try not to ask Beatle questions, and we try not to get too much into uh, into the uh, the weeds. Right, right. Is that? I'm sorry. I mean, yeah. do you have do you have questions? Uh, you know, as a musician, things you you might always have wanted to know how the Beatles did something, but you feel you can't ask them because. Well, He's really cool with it. I mean, certain times, you know, for at the beginning, say someone asked a Beatle question, it's fifty dollars. You know, it's, it's a fine. <laughs> you know, but once he starts to speak about it, it's amazing. Some of the stuff and and how the how the stuff. I mean, first of all, I think about his playing because that's always a thing that uh, 
I won't say it's underrated because that's ridiculous. Um, uh, it, it, well, how he plays his style, his whole thing is it's unto himself. I'm sorry about that. He's he's the guy. He's the only one who will ever sound like Ringo. I think we spoke about that last time. Yeah. And um, when you talk to him, it's it's usually like we're usually like Coach oh, G. <laughs> I mean, we're friends, but you still have to think. I was 11, 10 or 11 years old when the, when, when the shockwave hit me mm-hmm. and it still hit me and it's still hitting everyone. Uh, in yeah. fact, the, the, the more I hear about eight and 10 year old kids singing Beatles songs and these, these, uh, these rock camps and things like that, they're playing Beatles songs. They're playing Zeppelin. They're playing the greats. They're playing, they're, 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 they're trying to get back to that kind of sound. And the thing that, uh, one of one of Ringo's one of my favorite Ringo quotes when we spoke, and I said, "Oh, so and so, you know, you do the track, and it, it, that's it," because he did a song on my record, and we had to you know, go back and forth the track. But his thing is, if you're not in the room, you're not on the record, and it's such a great thing to think of that five guys should be playing in a room, mm-hmm. and that doesn't happen anymore. It I- simply doesn't happen anymore. Some of the greatest. The greatest grooves, like well, I think we spoke about it last time, Fire and Rain, that album by Free. Four guys, well, three guys, musicians playing. I mean, Paul Rogers might have played some piano, but it's a band. You could actually hear that Paul was probably singing what became the lead vocals live. And look at look at the Beatles stuff. I mean, how much of that stuff? I mean, when you see Get Back, you're like, oh my God, that's <laughs> that's how they do it. Mm. And uh so it's it's just it's just incredible is the only word for it. Hmm. Um, in your background info, it had said that you worked with John, and I couldn't remember what actually you had done. What, what, what did you record? In seventy five, we did um, we did a tribute to Sir Lou Grade, oh, uh, who was right. uh, yeah. I was in that band. It was called they called us um, John Lennon and etc. because they didn't want to say Bob because they thought the acronym might be in fact what it what it was. So they don't want to have the MF in there and that uh, screw anything up. So, but it was, that was the show. <laughs> we opened it up. Tom Jones, I think Julie Andrews on that show, Peter Sellers. It was great. It was at the, I believe it was at the Waldorf Astoria, right. 1975. And that's when we did the thing with the uh, mask, the skull cap. Yeah. <laughs> Darren's like, yeah, you know, pretty silly. <laughs> well, you've seen the photograph, right? Of, of, of sure. Those, I've the seen band. the video of, uh, of the performance. It's uh... yeah. It's. I that think was it was his his last live performance, wasn't it? Well, that's the last time he sang "Imagine" live. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, we went on to, after that. We did a uh, a Christmas thing that he sang to John. We did "Slipping and Sliding" and um, "Stand by Me." He did not do "Imagine." So the last time he sang "Imagine" live, I was pretty. I was you know mm-hmm. on stage with him, which is right. pretty crazy to think about. And then soon after that, I, I, Yoko was the one who put the uh, the skull caps together, and the, uh, the skull cap and the our mask, our, our our image behind our heads. And then I got to work with her in eighty five or eighty six, mm-hmm. and uh, that's when I saw the uh, we went up to the Dakota with the, the band went up after a rehearsal, and there were John's bloodstained glasses on the windowsill, which mm-hmm. is still like one of the eeriest things I've ever seen: the white piano and the bloodstained glasses. Yeah, that's that's something you never forget. Sure. Yeah. And I ask, since you just mentioned John, you have something in your book where you said that you attended sessions that John produced yeah. for Gary U.S. Bonds. Yep, they never were released. Uh, Jimmy Iovine uh, and George George, uh, I'm sorry, George, and Roy Sakala hmm. were doing things, and John was the producer. Uh, Gary U.S. Bonds heard something or well, from what i know gary u.s bonds opened up rather the beatles opened up for gary u.s bonds before they were on the ed sullivan show if i remember right i'm pretty sure that's correct and uh it was in england gary u.s bond was the headliner and john must have still loved his voice or the uh the whole vibe so they were going to do they did about three songs three or four songs and I cut two sax solos, but they never made it. I'd love to find out if they were ever, if they're anywhere, because, boy, I'd like to have something that John produced. The part of history. I'm surprised it yeah. hasn't come out in some form. 
Yeah. Well, I, I, I think I think John was very uh, uh, selective as to who heard what what was out and what he what he had done. And mm. I think that something might have happened either with the product with the um, the record company or something. So they, they they buried it. They're probably in some vault somewhere. I mean, think about how much stuff. Uh, we'll never hear all the stuff that Prince recorded. So God only knows where half of the stuff is. Yeah. So this this all happened after the Sir Lou Grade performance, right? With uh, U.S. Bonds. Yes. Yeah. In and around that time, it was a short. Right. I mean, uh, the time that I spent with John was only maybe six months in total, from the time I'd met him to the time he went off. Um, yeah, about six, maybe eight months. The band. Had already the band was called Dog Soldier after one of the uh, after a lyric, and uh, they had already recorded the Walls and Bridges album, Hand Claps and Oh Baba Kawa. They did a lot a bunch of that stuff. My you know John Covert, of course, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, John John uh, John had already recorded on the, the, those two records, and John and I knew each other from just playing in Brooklyn you know, banging into each other in different bands. And the guitar player who I was blown away with, this guy Joey Dambra, was the original guitar player in Dog Soldier or Bomb for there's a there's a third uh third title of the band, but uh, I don't remember that now. But uh Incantation was uh, a, mm -hmm. a, a a song that, that 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 John had produced with with the band. But uh yeah so John and I were, were close from before that. Right. Okay. John Cobert, that is, of course. Mm. <laughs> um, last time you talked a bit about how, uh, you know, there was no one was to bring in new material because the point of the band was to play the hits and all that. Mm -hmm. um, yet, you know, Ringo still makes records. And mm -hmm. especially these days, he's making records that are only like four tracks at a time. So right. you could conceivably play his whole new record and it wouldn't take up that much of the set. Well, um, why does he, why doesn't he want to put even his own new stuff in the show? We, we've gone through a bunch of, of the new tunes uh, when um, choose love. And uh, I'm not remembering all this stuff. There was the one song um, never without you. Is that, mm -hmm. was that the title that which is yep. beautiful. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I won't say he grows bored with it, but he just didn't feel like it's it, where do you put these songs in the set? You have hit, hit, hit. And then, you know, I hate to say it, but when uh, <laughs> even when Bruce does a new song, it's like, oh, maybe I'll get a T-shirt. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's That's just the way it is. People come to hear Thunder Road. They come to hear Born, uh, Born to Run. They come to hear the Beatles songs, they come to hear Yellow Sub, they come to hear um, It Don't Come Easy. And of course, the string of hits that the band has. He's the first one to say, oh, no one will care about that. And if it was getting, I mean, who buys albums these days? You know, think about it. We're talking we about, <laughs> no, I do, you know, we do. You know, I, I listen, my point being, so, so that means so, Ringo definitely sold four new EPs between the four of us. So it's, yeah. you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And and he he's very very conscientious of that. Uh, and I I applaud him for that because, you know, he's you have about a two hour set, and there's four Beatles songs. I'm a I want to be a man. Boys, Yellow Sub, Help for My Friends. And maybe one other. So there's five songs right there. I I, I have to look at the set list because it's not coming right to me right now. But don't come easy. Photograph. Um, back off boogaloo. Back off boogaloo. And these are songs that he loves to do, and he wants to have a good time. Uh, we're doing. Uh, we're doing. Uh, um, I'm the greatest. Excuse me. And now we finally started to do uh, Octopus's Garden. So it's another Beatles song. Imagine that. So, <laughs> so, you know what I mean? It's like, so right there, let's say six songs that are Beatles songs. And he gets six more songs. Hmm. So I think he's, the way I the way I perceive it is, he wants people to go away saying, that was great. They play, and he's still not, you're not going to get to hear all the songs you want to hear. 
And we spoke about that. I think one of the last things we spoke about is how, how much I've tried to get him to do a Beatles song, mm-hmm. any Beatles song. Like if I could get him uh, at Soundcheck one time, uh, Luke started playing. Eh, he started playing uh, um, um, Tomorrow Never Knows. And Ringo went to, and it was just explosive. And it was like, we should do that when I go, nah. <laughs> through dismissed it and once in a while one of the guys would start playing even like a ticket to ride or any one of the quintessential ringo tracks which uh, i'd love to talk about uh his playing and he just he just says no just says no hmm. believe me i've tried I would imagine well, he, Ringo, he did love me do. <laughs> yeah, but again, again, we did love me do. And how long did that last? And between you and I, who cared? <laughs> and I'm be- being very candid with you. I mean, he'll say the same thing. Oh, we did it for a while. We did, like I said, Choose Love was a great song. What was it? The, uh, uh, the last, yeah, sure. the last new song that he's done is Give More Love. Give More Love, yes. And that yes. was only at a few shows too. Yeah. Not an anthem. Uh, this is the end. This is an anthem. Yeah, an anthem was the other one. Yes, that was yes. Anthem was a song that he seemed to hold on to for a couple. Well, he of enjoyed years. it. He enjoyed it mm-hmm. again because it's a, it's an anthem of peace and love. It's a right. that's who he is. Right. Uh, until he has that hit, or until there's getting people, until people are, are whistling that song down the street, he's not gonna he's not gonna shove it down their throat. And again, I applaud him for for knowing his audience. I mean, he could say, "Hey, screw it, I'm going to do whatever the hell I want." He's a he's a freaking Beatle, and mm-hmm. he could do whatever he wants. But he wants the crowd to be pleased, you know. And like I said, he's just there's such just such a wealth of great material that uh, I don't think he feels. It might not be fair for him, for me to say that he doesn't feel that it's up to par or the standard, but. I don't think he. I don't think he wants to do it. He would do. Let me tell you, he'll do whatever he wants to do. So mm. the fact that he's not doing it kind of tells you he didn't want to do it. I would imagine it's possible that if Ringo actually ever did, say, a, a show that wasn't an all-star band show where it's just Ringo and another sure. group, and it was all him, right. he'd probably pull out a new song or two. Well, the Roundheads, the Roundheads did right. that for years. Yeah, right. The and Roundheads. Then, and it, and frankly, he's decided or he's moved on past that because he just enjoys the, the the camaraderie of all these great players and all these great songs that he gets. I mean, he gets as much of a kick at playing uh, "Who Can It Be Now" or "Rosanna" or you know, "Free Ride." He he just loves playing the other people's music. He's a fan. That's <laughs> you know, it's pretty, that's a pretty big thing in itself. Being a fan of the music. Interesting. When they had a press conference at the beginning of this last tour, um, the musicians said what they enjoy most is playing the other musicians' material, probably because they're tired of playing their own. <laughs> well, you know, it, it, it gets back to that whole thing. Yeah. It, they're a band. Yeah. And, you know, from day one, from the first from the first rehearsal in, in Vancouver, I realized we had to make, put our stamp on it. And whatever that is, because it's, it's it's kind of like a moving target because you, you, it's always evolving with the different people putting in a little bit. I mean, Edgar will come in and play some piano. They're like, whoa, it's hmm. got to be in there. Oh, this is uh, like Warren now playing a, 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 a harmonica solo on, on I think, Rosanna. Instead of uh, the first solo, it's a harp solo. It's freaking awesome. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's bad. <laughs> And it's typical Ringo with that. <clears throat> it's you know his version of Can Can, which is rock can, right. and it's it's so it's so unique. But that again, a, a different flavor in there, a little more garlic, you know. Mark, I understand what you're saying about applauding Ringo for not feeling he has to force his new music on his fans. But by the same token, you know, you have a song like Colin Hay wrote a song, "What's My Name." Uh huh. I mean, come on. That's the perfect setup. Ringo on stage is always shouting out, what's my name? And you'd think that the band would do a song like that. And then you've also got a song that Steve Lukather wrote with Ringo. We're right. on the road again. Right. 
they're in the band they're on the road it, and it's a great rocker and i think it would work well live as a you know as a rock song i so, agree with you on both counts it ain't gonna happen it's just ain't gonna happen hmm. <laughs> especially what's my name because ringo does it what's my name you know he loves that right. uh and and for that matter i mean when uh the one that really touched home uh one of my favorite people who was short lived in the band, um, Graham Goldman. Mm. Yeah. Brilliant songwriter. Mm. Brilliant songwriter from back at, uh, I, I'm sure you know this. Uh, he wrote a bus stop. He wrote, yep. uh, for, for your, your love. love. Yeah, I mean, yep. it's just a great yeah. songwriter of no milk today. <laughs> uh, you know, it goes on and on. And he wrote a great song. Now the title's eluding me. Um, about the time he spent with Ringo, and it's such oh, a yeah. wonderful song. It's such a wonderful song, and if we ever went out again, we wouldn't do it. <laughs> if we ever joined the band, we still wouldn't do it. It's mm. just that kind of thing. Ringo inspires so much uh, in in the music the young people are doing, and it will be that way forever, hopefully, because young people are smart enough to admire or would like to emulate the greatness they'll never be i hate to say it there will never be a, a band that will come off like that or be that but uh it, 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 when he when these people write songs colin or or graham or or, or um uh we just uh steve luke is there luke uh, anyone i mean everybody's had some ideas of songs he had a great title one time too good to lose and i had i wrote a song it's like but you know it's never gonna happen it's uh it's the way it is you know i may be showing my age but <laughs> didn't the theory used to be that you went out on tour to, to promote support your new stuff 100 and, and people would then go buy it if they liked it when they heard it in concert and but that's so that's so not the case now. I mean, look what look what Spotify, Apple Music, oh, and all that. the all, all that you know. Hey, I love that. I'll go. You know, I, I pay ten dollars for Apple Music, and I'll get I'll, that's, I'll listen to whatever I want, or I'll just mm. steal it. You know, it's 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 not. I mean, look at Billy. Billy hasn't written a, a song or hasn't released any new music since was it ninety one? Hmm. River of is Dreams. that yeah. River of Dreams? Is that like thirty two years? Wow, close. Like 90. Yeah. Yeah. 90 or, or one or two. Is, is that right? Is it 32 years? Well, you Something said. like that. Yeah. I, I want to make sure my math is right at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but think about it. So there's this a, a perfect example. Here's a guy selling out arenas. We just we just played 70,000 people at Hyde Park and they loved everything. The first thing that comes out, I've got good news and bad news. I haven't released anything, so you can hear the same old crap. <laughs> same old crap works for me and it seems to work for them it's <laughs> it's pretty crazy and that'll always be the case to have great music and the people who go to see Ringo's also bands want to see that set list they want to hear I should say that set list mm -hmm. I've never I never run into anyone and said wow you know I wish you'd have played uh, um, I wish you'd bring back uh any one of the songs they're talking about, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Choose Love, or they were great. Uh, anthem, Anthem was so much fun to play. This is an anthem. And it was, it was just a lot of fun. Well, there's, and, there's the three of us, and then we had someone wrote in <laughs> after the first show and, and said, how come he never plays any of his new stuff? So there you go. There's at least yeah. <laughs> There's five. There's five now. <laughs> there's also but, you know, no... Knowing, I mean, Dad and I have a, a radio background, and we know that radio doesn't play new music from veteran artists. So how do you get the music heard out there so that there's an interest in it, whether people stream it or buy it? It's, so, it's, it's a crazy world out there. I mean, uh, I had Ringo and Billy Joel and Steve Luke throw all these people on my record years ago. It's, like, it's got to be eight years ago, whatever. It is. I don't even remember how long ago. This and, one. Uh, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is there. correct. And I think it's a great record, but you know what? Couldn't get arrested. I think I got I got it on um uh Money 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 was on um Stephen Van Zant's 
yeah. the, the garage, and I, I think I got one couple of spins <laughs> when I was a guest at CBS, and I got a couple of spins when I did uh, if I did a, a, a Beatles Breakfast with the Beatles. You get, you know, it's kind of like if you and they say choose choose a bunch of songs and always sneak my song in there, but it ain't, it just doesn't happen. Uh, I'll, I'll go back. You want to talk about showing our age? Uh, when I was let me see, 67, 68. I was 14, 15, maybe 16 by 69. Um, I used to listen to WNEW. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pete Fornital, right? Uh, Scott Mute, Scott Muty. Mm-hmm. And how about uh, uh, Roscoe, who was my favorite? Yeah. And back then, I think we spoke about this last time, you'd play Joan Baez, Santana, Jimi Hendrix, uh, Country Joe and the Fish, the what was that crazy band? Uh, oh, it was like this all this all this hippie music from California from San Francisco, but it was in the same two hour time span. Right. Now you you will never hear. I, I can't I can't imagine hearing a new record on any of the on any of the top five radio stations, mm. which is very sad. As a DJ, wouldn't you like to say I heard this great band? Yes. Mm-hmm. You can't. Yes. So. It's it's again maybe we're showing our age and saying back in the day you used to be able to do that, and I think it's true. Back in the day, people really were turned on. I mean, look, uh, I'm still you know I'm a Hendrix fan. I love Cream. I saw Cream. I think we spoke about this instead of the Moby Grape. Cream was the the band that I got to see with Richie mm-hmm. Havens and the Soul Survivors. How about that for a group? Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> You'll never see that kind of a a, a, a head a, a, a bill anymore, and especially not for, for what was it six was it six fifty Alan? What was the per- ticket price of the Hendrix show? Yeah, it was like six fifty. Six fifty, and it was only it, you know it was only uh what was the first band the um uh, it was Buddy Miles in the middle, but there was a, a band start that opened Cat up. Mother and the All Night Cat Blues Boys. Night Blues band, the Blues Boys. <laughs> so three bands. So let's say it was six fifty. It costs me two dollars and twenty eight twenty, and then thirty. No, two dollars and seventeen cents a piece. <laughs> you know what I mean? To see three bands, it's <laughs> it's a crazy it's a crazy world out there. And yeah. believe me, I'm I'm not trying to put it down because I am the probably the luckiest person you might ever get to interview because I know it. First of all, I'm still doing this. We're, we're just starting our 10th year. We're already going on sale with Billy, the 10th year in this residency, which is insane. Uh, I'm playing with him 41 years. I'm with Ringo, it's coming on 28, 29 years. I know how lucky I am. So I don't ever want to say, oh, boo-hoo on, on the music scene. It's a shame they can't hear as much new music. But then again, there's a double-edged sword. People have a computer and they think they're a producer. There's more. Somebody told me the number of songs that get put on to Apple Music or Spotify a day. It's like, mm. it's insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. And the idea of I got to get a record deal. No, you don't. No. It's like those yeah. days are so over. Mm. So again, I, I hope I hope I'm not sounding like a boohoo or. I hope no one looks and says, "Oh, Marky's a real jerk because he." No, I, no, but um, just no. one ob- observation. You know, living in in two musical worlds as I do in my other musical right. world in classical music, people are always people who are critical of classical music even still existing are always saying well you know you guys go to concerts and you just want to hear beethoven symphonies and you just want to hear schubert and you just want to hear the same big i want i want to hit wc i want to hear ravel i want to you know yeah moves me so now and now the rock world is becoming like that too (laughs) everybody just wants to hear old old things and even though you've got artists going out who have new stuff they're not playing the new stuff because people nope. want to hear the old. Nope. It's, it's, a it's, 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 it's a it's a crazy world. Yeah, I think I could I could probably speak for Ken. You know, being in radio here is that we've this has been our life broadcasting and music, and I can't make heads or tails out of it today. And right. it just it's it's you know what why this happens it doesn't happen anymore but it happened 30 years ago and boy back then and you try not to sound old right but it's but, like i go to my kids sometimes 
And I'm like, no, hold on a second here. So and so, I, I just um, slap me. Johnson just sold out Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Who the hell is <laughs> slap me slap Johnson? I'll say to my kids, and they'll be dead. What, Dad? Dad, Dad come on. Interesting. I'm like, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. I've never heard that name before he sold out the garden. You know, right. what's going on? What am I missing? And they'll hit me with stuff and uh, TikTok, YouTube video. But, and I'm like, uh huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And they laugh at me when Amazon packages come and I'm like, oh, look, CDs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. Oh, it, dad. I oh, gave Dad. up trying to figure it out. And I got to say, thank God for FUV, uh, the radio station I work at, because we only play new music now. And almost weekly, I'm yep. looking, going, who the heck is this? And I'll look them up and they'll be like, oh, this is their sixth album. <laughs> I mean, mm. I, I thought I knew all this stuff yeah. yet. It's, it, it's, you can't it, make heads or tails, I think, out of what the music industry is now because it's almost like a completely different world Absolutely. unrelated yeah. to what went hap went down 30 40 50 years ago Absolutely. the way things worked like i yeah. admire i do want to say this and then we want to talk about ringo the drummer because i know we 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 had that whole concept of talking about the ringo's drumming and some of our favorite uh bits of ringo's drumming but i admire the fact that at this point in time that ringo is still despite everything putting out new music. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful that I'm getting, whether it's an album or now EPs, mm -hmm. which he prefers, right. new music, whether he plays it live or not. Um, and I, well, one of the things I was going to ask you is, do you plan on doing another record? Uh, no, I do. If uh, you did a record, yeah. you you are you are targeting an audience like very small who are buying these things but right. Ringo does it because of the pure joy um and i admire that it's like thank god he keeps good doing it and keeping right. the dying thing how about for you i mean do you i i, I work i work with the drummer a uh, drum programmer and a producer named jimmy Braylauer, who he and i work with everyone from from Billy to Hole and Oates to, to 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 Peter Gabriel, he's done a bunch of stuff with Steve um, Stevie Winwood. He's he's a tremendous talent, and he and I are writing a song here. Even if they're not songs, we're just writing. Uh, look, I, I'll tell you, we shamelessly are putting together pieces of music just for licensing, because I could get one piece licensed. And I'd have to sell forty thousand records, which ain't going to happen anytime soon, yeah. mm -hmm. to 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 equal the amount of money that I'd get paid for a for a, a, a song in a in a TV show. It's it's crazy how little how little revenue there is in making a record. Uh, the cost yeah. didn't go down. You know, if I want to make a great record, I'm going to call my friends. I'm going to call the best musicians that I can get. And they're not going to do it for free. I mean, they'll do me a favor, but it still costs money. And I refuse to just do it like, you know, piecemeal anymore. You got to get into a good studio. You got to get five guys, four or five guys in a room. And that costs money. Mm -hmm. So it's just tough. The answer, the short yeah. answer is it's harder and harder to, to feel motivated. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll come up with like a, when I speak to my son or if anything goes on, I'll come up with a couple of chords, you know, uh, and I con I'm constantly detuning my guitars to different tunings to, from David Crosby to Stephen Stills to all these different tunings because they're so beautiful. And you, you hit it, you, you know, you forget that the, the guitar is detuned to, to, to that guy and you put your hands in a place that should be C chords like, whoa, that's awesome. And, and it just inspires you. It's almost like this random, uh, it, it's like a, a, what we call a happy accident, which is part of the beauty of AI. But the other side of it is it's not the creativity that the guys like John Paul, George, and Ringo put together, at least in my opinion. Mm. Well, you next time you talk to Ringo, tell him Darren Ken and Allen said, keep those EPs coming because we're there you go. buying them. I love it. I in love fact, it. I'll buy I'll buy the C D, I'll get the vinyl and the cassette. So tell Ringo okay. he's got, he can count yeah, three on sale. that. <laughs> 
Anyway, um, when we uh, were planning out our Ringo show before we had a chance, uh, uh, before you agreed to come on, Mark, we were talking about, let's talk about some of our favorite um, drum performances of Ringo's. And and then and then I said, you know, we got Mark coming. I'm sure he's got a, a bunch of them. So um, I don't know how you want to do this, Ken or Alan, or do you want to take a, I'll, I'll let one of you two, you want to start and talk about some of your favorites? um Ringo fills and solos and performances on record well, as a drummer or should well, we go to Mark well, let's start with Mark yeah okay that's good call. good call put you on the spot, <laughs> spot okay um first of all one of the greatest drum performances of all time and it's going to sound very easy very laid back it's one of my favorite songs by the Beatles in my life Hmm. which you could go back and say, well, it's Anna or it's Misery or, you know, uh, was it Misery? No, Anna. Oh, okay. 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 But the, the thing about In My Life, first of all, Rubber Soul was such a beautifully recorded record. It's got the sound. It sounds like it's 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 embracing me. When I, when I hear it, when I put the, when anyone is... The first, those first few notes, and the three bits in the song are boom, tap, boom, stop, boom, boom, tap, boom, stop, which is and stop, boom, boom. but then but I know I'll never lose a thing, bing, 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 bing. It's three separate parts. That's the second bit. It's the the uh, and then the third part for people and friends that went before. And if you listen to his backbeat, where he hits that rim shot, it's almost as though a machine hit it perfectly in the same spot every time. He and Jim Keltner are the two greatest pops. And, and Jim Gordon is another great one. But, I mean, you could go on and on for how many songs you love. But that one in particular, In My Life, stands out uh, for that sound. Uh, another of my favorites, of course, is Tomorrow I Never Knows. But that's been just that the bashing sound which is um on on revolver which i love but uh how about rain mm -hmm. because the the fills you don't know where they're coming from uh that one and uh what else is on on the other one that i love on uh he said she said he said, she said, yeah. She said, he said, they said, <laughs> she said. But those two in particular, uh, Rain, well, Rain's not on, I'm sorry, Rain is not on that record. Rain is on from the, the back same of session paper. period. Yeah, exactly. But it's from the yeah. back of Paperback <laughs> Writer, correct? But the sound yeah. Yeah. and the approach is just unbelievable. It's just unbelievable. Uh, I believe that. Tomorrow Never Knows was the first song that Jeff Ember got to record for mm -hmm. what was Revolver. Mm -hmm. And he was he was going way past the uh, guys in the white coats and they were putting these ribbon microphones in a bass drum and blowing the crap out of stuff. M meters were just pinned and those sounds were unbelievable. And the same way the guys are just adding, oh, so let's, let's get another, a little, a, a new unit that could raise uh 10k in like some it's a super high frequency and and they they were just challenging sonically uh and Ringo's drumming I mean uh a song and it just goes on and on there's so many great songs uh for, I mean I haven't even mentioned Magical Mystery Tour or anything off that record or the White Album Happiness is a Warm Gun uh and when you hear when you hear him play through meters of seven or five, yeah. you don't know he's in an odd meter. Right. Like, Happiness is a warm gun. Right? Well, when I hold you in my arm, it feels like do, do, boom. it feels like it's in six eight, but it ain't. He just played it seamlessly, and he played again. I keep thinking about the session of uh, when they did um, get back. And Paul's just puts it around. All of a sudden, by the first, by the second time, it goes, and Ringo's glued to Paul. 
and that's the way the music evolved. They were just so connected. Uh, the White Album. I mean, I, I mean, I, I've listed, I think, three or four. And I, I will say, I love what he did on my record on Money, 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 because that song was cut. Um, it was so weird how it happened. We'd already cut the record with uh, Charlie Drayton and John Conti on bass. And it was great. But Jimmy Braylauer wants to get to Hey Buddy. Because mm. we start everything with Hey Buddy. Why don't you call your drummer friend and think maybe he'd play that. He calls it the Ringo Boogaloo. And it's just this loping. It falls over itself so beautifully. So now I have Ringo on drums playing to a song that nobody played to Ringo. And so Jimmy Brenner, I said, buddy, we got to call Will Lee because Will will play now with the with the drummer. So mm -hmm. now we have these two guys. But the drumming that he did is just is brilliant. And it, it was one take. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. at the end of the, I mean, I had the session. So how is that? I hope I passed the audition or something like that. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> you can't, you can't, you cannot, People don't, I don't know if people think differently. There are all, there's so many great drummers. I mentioned Dave Grawl. Uh, I love Chad. Uh, I, I love um, um, Chad uh, Smith from the, from the, from Peppers, Chili Peppers. There, there's some of the Vinnie Caliuta. There's tr so many great, great drummers, but all of them, if you ask them who is the king of the swing of drums, I would say they'd say Ringo first and then, put Keltner like right right in there mm. and it's no it's no accident that Keltner was in Ringo's first all-star band mm. because they're so they're so song oriented they're so they play the song and that's it did I lose everybody no we're all yeah. here oh, so just saw, I, saw, I got nervous so, um, okay. just, I, just, like, there's a loose connection right now I'm sorry uh, I keep coming uh, back uh, okay okay as long as long as, I, as long as I didn't I didn't do something wrong because I assume it's my fault immediately it's <laughs> it's my wife my wife has me trained it's me it's me I'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> yeah because your name just it's just your name Ken every once in a while okay, I just so. want more, I want more attention that's all that's, that's all it is <laughs> <laughs> so like what that. are your favorite what are your favorite <laughs> Beatles songs Ken uh in terms of drumming there are some of the same same ones you mentioned. I had to mention a day in the life, just the sound oh, of the drums right. on, on that song is phenomenal. But the thing about Ringo, I can't explain it in terms of the fills that he does, but they're so interesting that they help to make the song to the point where if anybody else is drumming, if you have a, a Beatles cover band and they're mm -hmm. doing the same songs, they never nail the parts the way that Ringo no. does it. And it's lacking something without that. Well, the, 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 the thing, to, to, uh, not to interrupt, but, one of the main things uh, I mentioned, Jimmy Braylauer, hmm. he's left-handed, as is Ringo. And the thing is, Ringo's starting like that to get to that crash to get back to his right-handed drum kit. Yeah. So especially Rain and she said he said those two. He said, "Whoa, where did that start?" You know what right. I mean? And uh, there's, there's another one that's not coming to my mind. Uh, off the white album, it's just like your blues. Or... No, that, that that's pretty straight. It, it's it's somewhere to be found, but it'll come to me. But again, it's a left-handed drummer playing a right-handed kit, hmm. so you ha you have this sense of falling to that my left yeah. hand, as yeah. opposed to this is back back at the get the get no back at the get the and he's turning the whole thing around. Right. It's just, it's so unorthodox. And because of that, we be, how crazy is it that he turned the whole feel around and it's like, oh yeah, that's how it goes. Mm. You know, no, no one ever questioned where those fills were. And same as those, those like, um, uh, boom, boom, da, boom, boom, boom. Cause there's a lot of rumbas and things like that, mm. but they became rockers. You know what I mean? Right. Instead of boom, boom. He just put it someplace and he made it explode. And that's how, and now that's how it goes. So <laughs> um, I also wanted to include, and I think part of the reason why I say this is because these days 
especially you can go on YouTube and hear isolated tracks right. or going back to when Rock Band came out. Um, the Word. Oh, yeah. Ringo's drumming is really interesting on there. Oh, yes. Um, the middle part of something, you know, you're asking me, will Milo grow? 100%. You know, yes. whatever he's playing there, it just, it makes it such a full sound of the band. Um, I put a few uh, solo songs in there. I love the sound on Back Off Boogaloo. I love oh, the yeah. way that the song starts that way, has a big fat sound to it. Mm -hmm. And also... Uh, two of the songs from Ringo Rama, Instant Amnesia, where he goes really wild on the drums. Uh, Everyone yeah. should check that out if they never heard it before. Uh -huh. And um, Eye to Eye, which is the opening cut. Really great fills, very yeah. powerful. And, um, you know, you got to hear this music. Spend a little bit more time listening to the solo music and, and yeah. you'll discover. Yeah. Um, and I also want to say that I think Ringo has benefited a lot in recent years with the remixing of Beatles records because the drums mm. are brought up more. Yeah. So right. I think that his drumming is is appreciated more now. Uh, uh, aside from the fact that he's always out there touring, which right. makes you right. you know admire him more because he keeps going out there. But um, I also wanted to throw in a couple of early Beatles songs only because they're so exciting in how they kick in. Like she loves you, does right. or, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> or tell me yeah. why one of those songs. Back of the yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that, well, that, that's go on, I'm sorry. You no, know, the sea loves you. I mean, sounds like it's impossible to play. I, I it just because you're trying to do it's it's not it's just a, such a unique way to open up the song and it's not a fill it's I, and I'm not I'm not a drummer, I'm not a musician, so it's hard for me to but every time I hear it, I'm going so simple yet so <laughs> ridiculously brilliant and it's probably not simple starting well, off a song with something like you know with that energy well the other, the other thing is a lot a lot of the count offs as we come to hear tracks exposed john didn't go one two three four here one two one two three four one two three five he was like double timing everything so that by time they got to the downbeat they were already propelled forward. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So one, two, one, two, three, four. Gang, it, it, they were the, 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 out of the gate. They were, they were up. They were up mm -hmm. for it. So, I mean, I remember the first time I heard, um, it won't be long. Yeah. 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 And, and then he goes, and, and then whenever I go up, and there's that drum bell, that drum beat. And then back at the down, back at the down, down. And that's your tell me why. Oh yeah, that's another. There's so I mean, I mean, do we? I mean, are we? Is there any? Is there a, a song that we think Ringo didn't play the right part on? I don't think so. No. So. <laughs> no. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. I also like, and you brought it up, Mark. All these time signature changes that are in Beatles songs, but it flows so well that you don't notice that they're different. Absolutely. And um, I know a lot of people have brought up Here Comes the Sun because there are different meters in yeah. that song and signature, but you'd never know it <laughs> from, yeah. from Ringo's drumming. Sun, album. sun, sun, here it one, two, three, four, two, two, take it, the triple, the triple, the triple, the triple, one, two. It's like, hello. But because <laughs> George just sang in certain ways, but well, John was the one who really had the trippy across the bar lines, like the way. Uh, if you listen, to, I'm sure you hear like Bob Dylan when his songs go on and on and on and they've been lasting and then they've been lasting, they 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 he's always going a little bit past the bar line. And John would have the lyric that would go, I'm not finished with the thought yet, so this is where it is. And Ringo yeah. would be right there making it feel like it was like this, yeah. One, two, and you never felt the hitch, you never felt it was never uncomfortable to listen to a Beatles song. And how that's how, think about that. How many how many songs are there and, and yep. how many nuances and bits and it's it's brilliant. I mean he also had a pretty good bass player. So <laughs> that mm. didn't hurt. <laughs> yeah. It's funny with Ringo's drumming, um 
you listen to it maybe the first time you listen to the record or the first several times and you listen to it sort of superficially and it just sounds like, you know, okay, that, you know, it, it's great. Once you start taking it apart, when you listen really closely and listen to just the drums and listen to what's happening, you hear a lot of, um, you know, complexity and nuance and interesting ideas that are not just what you might naturally do with that tune. And yet somehow it sounds inevitable and it's not inevitable. It's brilliant is what it is. And, and, it's, and it, it gives the impression it was, of being just naturally flowing like it is, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like in your world with classical music, there's certain things that is so mathematically perfect. Uh, the, 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 the Beethoven the pieces, the, the, the preludes and fugues, where they, where they go, they're, they're just, they work, they work, they work. It's like this music was meant to work. You know, and I, one of my favorite songs is um, uh, For No One. Mm. And in her eyes, you see nothing. And I think we spoke about, Paul was what, 22? Talking about the depth of loss of a, of a loved, and it's like, wow, they even had the, he had the, he had the, uh, the, uh, tr the French, French horn. horn part in his head already. It's like, <laughs> God. And and what you were saying, Alan, it was like, this is how it was meant to be. This is, it's kind of like my friend Jimmy says, that's how, this is how it goes. Yeah. You don't get to mess with it. This is how it goes. Mm -hmm. And you got the feeling as you listen to, especially when they got to, you know, each album was so different. Okay, for Meet the Beatles, then the second, and then there's uh, Help. I'm sorry, Hard Day's Night. They were moving along little by little, but then when Rubber Soul came out, it's like, whoa, they're going in a different direction. They're seeing that they're, they're, they're introducing new sounds, and then then you get to uh, Revolver and, and and Sergeant Pepper. It's like, oh my god, it just never stopped evolving. And each of their playing, each of their musicians, the musicality kept expanding and expanding and expanding, and it was like there was never. There's never a moment where you felt like oh, these guys are like a, they've outrun their coverage. You know what I mean? They've always mm. been evolving and innovative. So I mean, to your point, down, it's like this. It's it's like a classical piece of music. This is exactly how it is. Even though if you and and to your point, Ken, now that you hear stuff produced or sonically boosted and you're hearing more like just even the sound of Ringo's drums you're able to aside from the individual tracks just the, the, the sonics the sonic uh, the, 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 what 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 Giles did uh, Giles Martin the sounds of the the, the re-releases re I mean when they re-released Pepper and Revolver I was like uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know because those are like I mean Revolver is my favorite Beatle record and because mm. it was when they just really, to me, hit a certain stride that like all bets are off. We're going to just do what we do. And that's it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if was that, the, that was the point. I know Peppers, when they said, we're never, we're never going to have to worry about playing this live anymore. So there are no, no, no whole bar, you mm. know, yeah. So the, no boundaries. Yeah. It's funny how I, I, I'm the youngest guy here. And, uh -huh. and, and it's very cool to think, you know, I'm the kid now. When you get older, you want to be the younger one. Right, when you're right. younger, you want to be you the older one. Uh, but in a way, I wish that I was old enough to have experienced uh, Revolver, Sgt. Pepper, these albums for the first time. Yeah. You know, I learned, I found out about them. I l heard them in the 70s. And I kind of uh, knew that I was going to, you know, what was up. going to yeah. happen. Yeah. Yeah. But to be a fly on the wall yeah. and somebody's go go back to Brooklyn to Mark Rivera's bedroom uh -huh, uh -huh. with his copy. That doesn't sound right. But no, you know, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, at the, you come running home with your copy of Sgt. Pepper. Right. And, and you throw it on the record player to see the reaction. Sure. You know, Absolutely. of this music for the being heard for the first time. Well, yeah. the other thing is what, 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 what I would do is that the drummer in our band, this guy Daryl Leosi, uh, he had a simple, I mean, I had a really, uh, I had the first really stereo. My father had a great stereo with great electrostatic speakers. But I remember going to my friend Daryl's house and even on this small Panasonic stereo, it was like your head was right there. 
the sound and Alan, you'll you'll attest to this. There's nothing like the sound of when the when the when the needle hits the first groove and it's that the yeah. tone the tone that vinyl makes before the record starts. There's like a mm. I don't know if it's a low end hum or it just it because CDs don't do it. CDs cannot do it. When you put that needle down and you get that. Yeah. And then all of a sudden the music comes in. It's magic. It's absolute. I mean, I could I could still remember the first time putting the record, the needle down, and he and then all of a sudden, one, two, three, four, one, yeah. two, go. <clears throat> it's like, whoa, <laughs> they left that on the record. So how cool was that? <laughs> it was crazy. It was crazy how great that was. And you felt like you were being led into their world. Two, three, go! Right? The first thing, one, two, it's like a scientist, and all of a sudden, John, two, three, go! Done. And you were transported at that point. So, Mm -hmm. you could tell I loved my, I loved hearing that stuff, right? So, and so, Ken, did you, uh, I, did you hit your, I I think Mark hit most of his, and, and Ken, you mentioned, do you have any more songs you want to single out or? Uh, no, that'll Alan do Cody for the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to you tomorrow. There'll be five other songs. Yeah, I know. yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, I mean, Mark's been mentioning ones, and I'm writing them down here. Going, I have the, I have a list here of the. You should have picked these uh, <laughs> songs because it's like, oh yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah was, right. <laughs> no, I'm not going to mention this now. That I'm embarrassed to this one. That was a good pick. But uh, Alan, what do you have on your list? Okay, so um, so Mark had already mentioned "Tomorrow Never Knows" and "Rain," which were on my list. But then, you know, "Strawberry Fields Forever" is is one. I mean, uh, and and some of that I think Paul might have played a little timpani on that record too. Mm-hmm. But um, but that's just really accenting what Ringo was already doing. Um, uh, I'm going to mention three together, and then sort of uh free associate uh a day in the life obviously mm. is a, another and long 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 you you don't really think uh. of the drums in that but um yeah. the thing about all three of those is that um mark last time you were talking about how ringo plays the song you know uh and yeah that's that's sort of what he does but he to me he also it, it's almost as if he's sort of orchestrating it you know like yeah. It's not just that, like, okay, we need a beat here. We need a timpani or a bass drum or a roll or, you know, some right. specific thing that has to do with what's going on in the lyrics, what's going on in the music, um, and and sort of creates a kind of drama that all the other instruments aren't creating. And that's especially, I think, the case in Long, 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 which right. you know, when you think about it in the abstract, you, you, I don't even know if you think about the drums, you know, right, right. but when you listen to it, those drums come crashing in at a certain point and it, it just sort of changes the whole emotional temperature of, right. of the song. And, and with a day in the life, you know, it does that too. There's a lot going on in that song. And yet the drums are, are punctuating in, uh, you know, a really, logical but also dramatic way Mm -hmm. um so for for those like late period beatles things mid to late period beatles things that's what i think he was um contributing there and and i bet you know though if you if you said that to him he'd say oh you're daft (laughs) you know he doesn't like he doesn't think in terms of like if you were to tell him you know i think you're orchestrating those drum parts yeah get out of here you know if you if you wanted to look at some early ringo beetle stuff um i had uh written down what you're doing because it's got that nice little pattern in the beginning um that's a that beetle six um, yes. For us, it was, but it was uh, probably Beatles for sale. Beatles for sale. Beatles and- for sale. Okay, because <laughs> that, that, that those there's a couple of songs that that boom, that boom, boom, that boom. That, boom yep. that. It's one of my favorites. Uh, I mean, it, you're you're at the tones. That's that's the other thing. The sound. What you're doing is a great one. I'm sorry that you just reminded me of another great one. So there you go. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So, but then I was going to um, hand over to Darren 
because um, between the three of us, I think we've we've used yeah. most of what he had already yeah. said. So. <laughs> we picked all the songs I'd singled out. Um, Rain has always been well. First of all, what I what I've found with Ringo is that uh, I'm I'm nobody plays air guitar and air drums better than me. I right? believe it. <laughs> or I've got like you know I my when I'm driving a car, it's like you're in you 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 in a car with a a musician. All right, I have no ability whatsoever. <laughs> but, but I always found that with the Beatles Beatles songs, if I'm attempting as I'm driving, I'm you can't. I mean, there's something that's very unorthodox on so many things. They don't make sense what he's playing. Fills in places that, you know, you don't expect them to be. Or even with these remixes now, you're hearing things that Ringo was doing that maybe were a little buried over over the years. Um, and I always was attracted to Rain because of McCartney's bass playing. And mm -hmm. then one day, uh, it just hit me. It's almost like a storm itself, the rhythm section in this, yeah. because both Ringo and Paul are going places that you don't even hear musicians today do. Who go. No, no, not at all. Uh, and, and, and I just, the, I can't imagine the, uh, uh, the, the, the connection that the two of them had when they were recording that, uh, you know, and working together on that. I mean, it's just an explosion of rhythm. And it's beautiful. I mean, to me, Rain is one of the great power pop songs of all time. I, I mean, agree. there's no denying I agree. that. And, I agree. Uh, but, so, but that was the first song I picked out here for Ringo Fills. And then uh, we've talked about Strawberry Fields Forever. Uh, someone picked Strawberry Fields Forever. And when we got the anthology albums, Anthology 2 allowed us to hear Ringo isolated at the end. Yeah, yeah. And it was like nuts, that playing, that partially it's faded out on the final version and you yeah. don't really hear everything and and yeah. then just as it runs out of steam what does john say at the very end okay calm like, down ringo calm <laughs> down ringo um uh devil in her heart and i want to be your man were a couple of early right. songs right. devil in her heart because that that's one of those songs that starts with a ow pop boom, down, down, down. and 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 i want to be your man uh, again, the beat is not where you'd expect it to be on that song. Right. And it's got like a little bit of a... It's in a different place from what you would expect. Um, and Tomorrow Never Knows, of course, and A Day in the Life. And I think uh, one, the last song that I want to mention, I, I, there was a video clip uh, recently uh, I saw, and I don't remember what... what don't, it was don't, not the one from Pittsburgh? Uh, the, no, the live, uh, black no, and white. no, 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 oh, an sorry. interview clip with Ringo. Oh, so where he was talking about what he played in Come Together. Mm. Wow. Those, right. those, and, and, <laughs> uh, and you're like, yeah. who would think that to put those, the little, the rolls in those spots and that song so quiet, so subtle yeah, in the yeah. background that most people are listening to it and they're not hearing it's a, it's a, not, not at all not at all the, the innovation uh, there what one more yeah. came to mind uh as i was running upstairs to check on the pot <laughs> everybody got something to hide except me and my monkey mm. listen okay. to the beginning yeah. of that song and tell me where it starts i'm trying to at, 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 go, go, at. it's like it's bam, not just bam. Ringo. The whole yeah. song is like it's it's coming from. It's like he just got hit on the side somehow. Yeah. Are you are you familiar with the, the entrance I'm talking yeah. about, Alan? Yeah. How, yeah, how, how, how unorthodox that is. Yeah. 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 So, mm. but it, it's just it, it, it's just so many. Like I said, it's it's almost like try to find a song that he didn't play exactly what was needed, and I don't think it, I don't think it is it exists. So. Yeah. Is um today Ringo Starr today is Ringo uh, particular about uh, uh what type of drums and cymbals he uses? Is he a gearhead, uh, or is he? He's got Jeff Jonas, so Jeff Jonas is enough of a gearhead to make it right. Jeff sets up his drums, the pitch, a perfect. He's got that one huge cymbal that he played on the Ed Sullivan show. Still, he uh, uh he you get some new cymbals once and again, but. 
that symbol, that ride symbol, that mm -hmm. is the same one he's had forever. He also doesn't allow anybody to clean that because the tone would be completely different. Mm -hmm. um, he's, you know, I remember one time he's, he was so upset with Zach because Zach needed some, some lugs for one of his kits. So he went into like his... Uh, either the maple kit or the Ludwig, the uh, the original Grady uh, um, 64 kit. And he just took a couple of lugs. And it's like, really? <laughs> so, hmm. but he, so that scene not, in Hard Day's Night when the guy is touching his drums and Ringo comes along and says, get out of here, that actually is realistic. <laughs> well, yeah. was it, what did what it, it George, the, 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 the loom lodge and his legend, yeah. right? Is that the line? Right? Yeah. So he's no, very he's, uh, fussy about his drums, you know. You know yeah, right. <laughs> I want uh, a couple of uh, I don't know if you have any uh uh last minute questions for Mark, uh Alan or Ken, but uh just jumping around just quickly, tying up some loose non ringo, non beetle um uh ends. Uh, I don't know if you could shed a little light on this. You mentioned this earlier on, Mark. Uh Billy made the conscious Billy Joel made this conscious decision back in the nineties that I'm not going to do any more new music. Uh, I think he did do that one classical piece. That classical mm -hmm. recording came out after that, but that's been it. Um, why doesn't Billy Joel write new music today? You hear the songs that he has come up with and the backlog that's got to be in his head. Um, there's, there's, there's a lot of brilliant songs wanting to come out. I know there is. Why, does, why has Billy turned his back on I think he's just I think he's just satisfied with his body of work and I think uh, he's he'd be the kind of guy who would have a target on his back for like any critics who listen to his music and like oh it's not it's not uh teller it's not tell her about it so he does not love that so it's not um just the way you are or it's not uh, any one of the big hits I think he thought that his catalogs stood the test of time and he just decided I don't want to write anymore. He loves he loves classical music. He'll come up with these pieces and I'll just play. He's got this incredible ear that we'll be doing a sound check and I'll start to play a piece by Beethoven or Brahms or whatever in a completely wrong key, but he, it's right and it just he hears where his ears hear everything and his fingers mm -hmm. just go there. He's just not interested. Um, I don't know if it's the state of the world. I mean, I don't know if you heard the uh, the new version by. Um, uh, we didn't start the fire. I can't remember the name of the band now. Um, it, it's people are like, oh, it's a, uh, a new take on Billy Joel's music. Uh, we, I can't remember who it is now. Yeah. And frankly, I heard it. It's like, it just doesn't do anything. To, it's like the easiest thing to do is take something that exists and say, I'm going to make it something like this. But Billy was just in the studio with Mick Jones and they had a, a, a course and he had a, apparently an encyclopedia Britannica and just went through from the year he was born. This uh, Harry Truman, Doris Day, Red China. And he just like, picked these things out. Mm. That's, that's where he is. His mind just works like that. And when he finished up River of Dreams, I think it's like, you know what? I, I done what I want to say. These are the last words you'll ever hear. That, that That's, that's, it was a conscious effort. And I, I think one time Elton said, you know, you don't write enough new music. And bring us, uh, And Billy said, well, I think you write too much new music because I'll ask you, have, can you whistle any one of the last five songs Elton John's put out? Nope. Crickets. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> no, I, see, have, not, look, I, I have everything, but I couldn't. Uh, that's my point. Top of my head. Hmm. Well, that's what I'm saying. Could, could you hum Mad Men Across the Water or Goodbye Yellow Brick Road or your song or any one of the great songs? Of course you can because they're great songs. And at a certain point in time, let your catalog speak for itself. Interesting. And uh, I, 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 think, I think, again, I applaud people who were able to step to that point and say, you know, I'm done. I think I think my, my work is done here. You know, because... Uh, uh, I remember asking Joe Walsh one time, and uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to curse. Is that okay? Could you? Would you rather I don't? Um, Alan, <laughs> right, I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll tell hey, you Mark, what. Mark, 
Okay. Mark was asking if he's allowed to curse. Oh, it's up to try with me. <laughs> okay. Okay. I spoke to Joe Walsh a while ago and he had that record out, um, uh, Analog Man. Right. Great record. All analog and everything was recorded two inch tape. I said, Man, it's a great record. Sounds great. I said, I said, do you like not like Pro Tools? And he said, Mark. If we had Pro Tools back in the day, we'd still be fucking mixing Hotel California. <laughs> in other words, Pro Tools gives you so much or so many possibilities. Right. The beauty, think about it. When you listen to great Beatle records, there's stuff that Ringo played on the original track that will have to live forever. In other words, we're not going to change that. They ain't no going back there. And commitment is a great part of what those guys were able to do. They, they would, I mean, aside from the fact that they've rehearsed and played so many gigs already, this is what you got. You knew that's how it was going to be. So uh, I, I'm sorry to keep looking. I'm, I'm kind of short on time. Okay. All right. But, but, but do, have we answered, enough, have we answered the questions? Um, could I have one last one? Sure. Okay. Uh, first of all, I want to echo the words of Darren, how grateful I am that Ringo is still out there touring and still making new music. He wouldn't be doing this unless he truly wanted to. It's what's in his heart. Right. And that's what drives him to do all this stuff. And I've loved all the all-star bands that he's had. But I know that for a lot of people, year after year, when he had a new all-star band, part of the joy was seeing, oh, who's the next new member? Yeah, Who's right. going out of this band? Who's in the next new band? And I know that when it reached a point when he had Steve Lucas, there, Greg Raleigh, Todd Rungman, Richard Page, he got very comfortable with that band. Mm -hmm. And tour after tour was that same band. And he even said, this is my favorite band of all the All-Star yeah. bands. Yeah. What was it about that band? And why do you suppose that um, unless a member leaves, he's going to keep the same musicians? You know? He loves the musicality. He loves the songs that they bring, and he loves the level of professionalism. Hmm. He calls this his grown-up band uh, because everybody's acting like a grown-up. They're getting along the way we should. There's no ego trips. Uh, I mean, I I had the thought a while ago it would be the stars of the All Stars, which would be like if we if he did again. I don't know if it's ever going to happen. If he did a residency in Las Vegas, let's say he did six weeks or a two week run and then wait a month and then another two week run. I'd love to have a core band and then invite if they are able to have, I mean, at one point I wish we could have Gary Burke come in and mm. Peter Frampton come in and then have Paul Carrick come in and Richard Page to spend a week with them. These are all things that, and that would make it like to me, it's just a blast that he'd already have known the material but uh, I don't know if that would ever happen. But to me, the stars or the stars of the All-Star Band would be a great thing to have. I mean, we, we couldn't go on, on, on a tour and have like 12 people. So that would never happen. But the idea of having almost a rotating, uh, just like a musical chairs, I think would be fantastic. But he loves this band. He loves, adores Steve Lukather mm -hmm. uh, on a multiple of levels. First of all, he, he looks incredibly funny. Uh, in, in, insanely talented and they just get along they'll come over and they'll you know write songs together and they just have a good time so well, like uh, i said I, I love all the bands you know yeah, that's that's yeah. part of the thrill is to see the variety through the years and um you know and to see how far into the decades will ringo go like yeah, when he went yeah. into the 80s would he yeah, ever go yeah, into yeah. the 90s i don't know who knows who know. knows no you're, you're right i mean i mean i i, I could see I mean, if we, if we could have guests, hmm. again, I've said Dave Grawl, I'll say Stevie Winwood, I'll say a bunch of people that I would love to see. And uh, yeah. it's also availability. And, um, you know, you're talking about a, a commitment. It's a hmm. commitment. It's not like, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sit in with you one night. He's had people come sit in, but it's not like something that's going to be on a marquee. And so, so you know, because these guys actually still work. So, yeah. so it's a tough thing. So, but I, I have to say on that note, I hope I've, I hope I pass the audition. You pass the so, audition. Mark Rivera, colors. thank you so much, Thanks Mark. Mm -hmm. Everything you. you did for us and all the time. And we'll do this again at some point uh, down the line. Uh, right. talk, talk more. Mark Rivera, Billy Joel, and Ringo Starr, of course. 
Mark, uh, Mark's book is called Sideman in pursuit of the next gig. And Ken is modeling it and it's got a <laughs> go star and pick it up, check it out. It came out at the beginning of the year. Uh, and again, Mark Rivera, thank you so much. God bless. And thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank, Ken, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. It's, it's my great pleasure. Uh, Alan, Ken, Darren, thank you for your, thank you for putting up with me and thank you for giving me the second <laughs> opportunity here. That's I'm going to jump for now, but we will do this again. In fact, maybe uh, if you have an October show, uh, I, I should be available. I'd love to talk John's music. I'd love to talk John. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. I, yep. I would love you, that. I would absolutely love that. So let's look forward to that. Until okay. next time. Remember, you, love, you you always have a gig on this show. I, <laughs> I that, 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 that could always be your next gig. That's I'll, I'll, I'll I have that in my back pocket here. Okay. <laughs> okay. Peace All and right. love, gentlemen. Thank you. Mark. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, man. Take Thank care. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Take too. Care. Now that was a treat. Mark Rivera, can't thank him enough for taking time out twice in a week to uh, sit down with us and talk about Ringo Starr and some other things, a little Billy Joel in there too as well. And I think a great way to celebrate Ringo's 83rd birthday, which is now, what, uh, about a week and a half ago, I guess. Ten days. Uh, yeah. At this rate, we'll be celebrating his 84th birthday here. Um <laughs> with a third show and a fourth show. But uh, again, no, I can't thank Mark Rivera enough. We'll see Mark next, I guess, uh, at the Garden when Billy Joel, as Billy's beginning to wrap things up with his uh, residency at the Garden. And don't forget Mark Rivera's book, Sideman, in pursuit of the next gig. Uh, and there it is right there. And the forward's written by Ringo Starr. Sideman, mm -hmm. in pursuit of the next gig. Mark Rivera's book. So check that one out. So let's put a wrap on this things we said today uh, by going around the horn uh, and sharing our individual things that we have planned for you. Uh, you can hear me on WFUV Monday through Thursday nights starting at 10 p.m. until 2 a.m. and also then on Saturdays uh, from 1 until 4. A couple of quick things. I mentioned these last week. Uh, on our first Ringo show, show with Mark Rivera. Um, on this coming, we're recording this now on the 17th of July, this coming Saturday, which would be the 22nd, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I won't be on the air from 1 to 4 on Saturday. Uh, I will be on at 4, filling in for Don McGee on Pete Fornital's old show, Mixed Bag, which you can hear every Saturday from 4 to 8 p.m. Uh, on WFUV. So this coming Saturday, I won't be doing my gig, but I'll be covering for Don McGee. Uh, and that's on WFUV. And then on Tuesday, uh, and that would be the 25th, uh, I believe, Tuesday, July 30th, uh, 25th. I will be hosting uh, in Pleasantville, New York, at the Jacob Burns Film Center, uh, a screening of the King Crimson documentary called In the Court of the Crimson King, King Crimson at 50. They'll be showing that film as part of a, a summer music film series they're doing at the Jacob Burns Film Center. That's in Pleasantville, New York. And again, Tuesday night, July 25th. Uh, I believe this it starts at 7. I'll be hosting... Uh, the screening of that King Crimson movie. So, and WFUV is at 90.7 FM and WFUV.org. Over to Ken. Okay, thank you, Darren. Uh, my radio program, my syndicated Beatles radio show, Every Little Thing, currently on about 50 radio stations. Uh, you can go to my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. Dot com. There's a page for every little thing, which lists all the radio stations that run them and the times that they're broadcast with links to each individual website so you can stream them. But an easier way to hear every little thing is that you can listen on demand at WFDU's website. That's Fairleigh Dickinson University's station, where the show is heard Sunday mornings, 6 a.m. Eastern time. But then after that, they take the show, they make it available for two weeks. So if you go to WFDU.FM, click on their archives page, type in every little thing, you will have two weeks worth of shows there. So you can listen to, it's a one hour show, Beatle music, solo music, everything Beatle related, thematic sets, hits, rarities, all mixed together. 
that's what every little thing is all about. And so again, that's WFDU.FM. Go to my uh, YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels Radio, where there's all Beatles content on there, interviews with people in the Beatle world. Another interview with Luca Parasi, who is the author of Paul McCartney, Music is Ideas. It's all about Paul's music from the beginning of his solo career in 1970 through the end of 1989. And it's an incredible reference book with information about all the music from that period. The show that we just did covers the end of Wings and what I often refer to as the McCartney-Martin trilogy, Tug of War, Pipes of Peace, and Give My Regards to Broad Street. So the entire show is just on that and the end of Wings and what caused the end of Wings or what we believe caused the end of Wings, all the theories behind that. My other uh, podcast show on the Beatles, Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. Talk about being blessed. <laughs> the two Marks in the Beatle world. We had Mark Rivera here. Mark Hudson was on our last show to talk about Ringo Rama for its 20th anniversary of Ringo's album. So two tremendous guests there with a lot of insight working with Ringo, especially Mark in the studio working with, with Ringo, the songwriting, every aspect of that album and the other stuff they worked on. So you can check that out at our YouTube page, which is Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast. Between that and Michael's radio, my YouTube channel, and here, I think we said today, please subscribe to all, all those uh, YouTube channels. And then there's my website, kenmichaelsradio.com, Beatles trivia every single week, where you can win one out of 10 great prizes. And still, the McCartney Legacy Volume 1 is one of those prizes. Mm. So uh, if that's something that you haven't picked up yet, what's keeping you? Here's one way where you can actually win the book at KenMichaelsRadio.com on my Beatles trivia and games page. And that's about it for me. And if anybody wants to, you know, maybe forgot something you just said uh, or or wants to find out some other things, the website's the place to go to really to get all the information on everything that you're doing that you just basically pointed out now, right? For the most part, yeah. You know, going forward. Mm -hmm. uh, Alan? Yeah, and uh, in fact, um, if you go to either YouTube, uh, where our video podcast is, or Podbeam, which is one of the many places where the audio podcast is, um, in the description of the show, there is a long list of all of the you know links and times and everything about the stuff we do. Um, so if you spaced out or just forgot it's all there and you can check it out um to get in touch with me uh i've got two facebook pages alan cozen and alan cozen remixed you can get in touch with all of us by email at things we said today radio show at gmail.com and we do our best to respond uh, we also do our best to entertain show ideas if you have any. And uh, so write to us and say hi. Uh, we're also on Twitter um, at, at Things We Said Fab. We should start a Threads account as well. Um, we'll do that soon. Um, and yeah, we have uh, two Facebook pages as well. Things We Said Today and Things We Said Today, Beatles radio fans. Um, so you can find us there and uh, that's how to get in touch with us. And that's it for me. All right. Thank you, Alan. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Darren. You're welcome. And thank you to Mark Rivera for, uh, again, can't thank him enough. He was just so giving <laughs> of his time for us. Mm. Uh, but and, and he'll be back at some point, I'm sure, in the future. And of course, thanks to you for watching and listening. We appreciate it. And we will see you in a couple of weeks with the next things we said today. For Ken Michaels, for Alan Cozen, I'm Darren DeVivo. Peace and love, my friends, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Take care.